over on the Glowforge laser cutter forum, uh, there is some discussion of the feasibility of cutting a dovetail joint using only a traditional laser cutter, you know, a three axis laser cutter. Obviously, the green part would be real easy to cut. You just take your flat stock, you know, come in and cut this out, and you're done, essentially. The blue, on the other hand, would be uh, quite a bit more difficult. That's because it has these angles here. With a 3-axis laser cutter, if you want to cut... Um, Cutting all the way through is easy enough. Engraving to a certain, to like one depth, that's easy enough. But engraving to multiple depths like this uh, is probably going to prove to be pretty difficult. Um, one way you could do this is you, you could basically start by cutting this square out and then just get rid of that piece of material. And then you could come and engrave real deep from the top down to this little ledge right there. And then, you know, just engrave just this tiny little bit. Then come back and engrave only to this, this depth, da-da-da-da-da, all the way through. Uh, the thinking is, is that adjusting the power for all these different levels is going to be real difficult. So... To uh, avoid that, I'm going to sort of take a, a different approach to it. I'm going to start with a flat piece of stock. And then I'm just going to cut, or I should say engrave, two rectangles out of it. And then inside those rectangles, I'm going to use the same cut settings and everything. And engrave two more rectangles. Um, as I'm sure you can tell, I'm going to keep doing that over and over until I eventually uh, engrave through the entire part. If while I'm doing this, um, I fall a little short before this 12th cut, I'm just going to uh, do the 12th one a second time so to try to get all the way through. We'll see what happens. So I basically drew this in SolidWorks um, just to show what I'm going to do. But when I actually uh, run it on a laser, I'm going to be using Rhino. So as you can probably see, I've got the 12 jobs separated into 12 distinct kind of objects here. So I'm going to do this one first. Uh, and what it'll do is it'll come in and just engrave these two black rectangles. And... The way Chrotech works is um, the engraving settings and cutting settings are based on color. So black is one uh, one color that it uses, and I have that set to engrave at a certain couple power settings. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, uh, isolate it, print this, send it to the Trotec laser, and engrave it. And I'll come back here, and I'll take the second one, and uh, isolate it, print it, da-da-da-da-da, all the way through to the 12th one. If the 12th one uh, breaks through, I'm going to then just get this uh, outline here and change it to red right there. And then probably get rid of these uh, two engraves and uh, send this and this to the laser. And I have red set up as a cut. So then I'll cut these two shapes out. Uh, hopefully then they will basically fit together. We'll see. This is definitely a, a tedious way of going through this process, but... I, uh, I just, just kind of a pr proof of concept. Somebody, a savvy, you know, software writer or something could probably figure out a way to, to send this kind of instruction set to a laser, uh, with the push of a button or whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm going to 
take you out to the laser and I'm going to record everything. It's probably going to be played in fast forward. I assume it'll take a while. So I'll do the first one probably at normal speed, then the rest in fast forward up until maybe the end of one of these. Um, cool. See you at the laser. The engraving process produces uh, some kind of powder. Maybe it's ash. Maybe it's just little particles of, ac of acrylic. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's accumulating in the engrave. If you're only doing one, it's not a problem. But here I'm engraving on top of old engraves. And when I do that, it's got to blast through that powder before it actually gets to the to the acrylic underneath. And as you'll see in a second, that's actually, I think that's what's caused these little uh, bridges of acrylic to stay there. And the cuts are not square either, which I have to deal with in, in a moment, as you'll see. All right, let's see if this works. Oh my god, it doesn't work. It might just be the edges. Here I've decided to try to clean up one of the slots just to see if I can make it work. I don't go too crazy with it, but I'm definitely removing... Uh, well, I'm definitely doing more work here than I would have liked. I, uh, I personally like my projects to come right off the machine finished. Well, not the best dovetail I've ever seen. But, that's all right. I'm going to end this video with some close-up shots. If you're prone to motion sickness, you might want to look away. I didn't do a lot of filing on it, but this is the results after filing. In the slopes, you can kind of see some of the powder or the ash or whatever it is. The residue that's left over from engraving. So you can tell that, you know, obviously I didn't file a whole lot. I put it together here, and I, I guess um, when I was putting it together this time, the corner broke off. So I sort of show the corner close up. I'm not sure if that'll be helpful for anyone, but... So 
So I hope that was entertaining and stuff. See you guys later.